welcome back to the channel guys today we're going to be going on a ride with the e93 m3 the question today is should you buy an e93 m3 or an e92 m3 and i'll show you guys and hopefully convince you that the e93 is totally fine and the e92 while a great car may not be worth the price tag all right so we are in the e93 m3 and this is going to be a cold start on a very hot day as you can see right here i'm sweating so let's start this car up that's the gas telling me to fill up gas of course as always this car doesn't have the best gas mileage especially with e85 so the valves is a must-have if you live in an area where you know you don't want to annoy your neighbors especially on cold starts so what I usually do is I let the car warm up for about 40 seconds and then once everything, uh, the idle settles, then I can go out for a drive and I have these two uh, headphones on as ear monitors. I can still hear outside so I'm not listening to music or anything as I drive here. It's more for just making sure that you guys can hear the sound of this car. First thing you want to do is warm up the car and make sure that you don't rev it past 3000 RPMs until the oil temperature hits about 210. I'm testing out a new mount set up here so it might be a little shaky. It's on my uh, phone cup holder or it's on my cup holder right now. So let's start off with why you would want to buy an E93 over an E92. And the first thing that comes to mind is do you have a budget and what is your budget because the E93 can be had for much less than an E92. Uh, my E93, I bought it for right around $18,000 and this was before the pandemic but you can still find good deals on them for a clean, clean title, clean example, right around the $25,000 range or mid-20s. And with the E92 M3, they're much more popular, sought after so you will be looking to pay a premium for them usually above 30 possibly even 40,000 depending on the specs and the condition so I saved a ton of money going with the E93 and I don't really regret that at all another thing is that I really like about the E93 is that it's, it's more unique when you go to car meets especially here in the Bay Area everybody has an E92 and even the E90s are very popular but you don't see very many E93s, let alone modified ones like myself. Mine is pretty heavily modified. Wow, this shadow is weird. Sorry, guys. But mine is pretty heavily modified to the exhaust, the induction noise, the way it handles. Uh, it's all done with uh, my own care. I DIY everything, and I also use. Uh, quality parts that are affordable and don't break the bank. So if you check out my channel, I have plenty of videos on how I modded this car as well as how I saved a lot of money in doing so. So the next thing we can talk about is the look. I think the look of these cars, the E93, especially with the top down, looks beautiful. It's unique. Um, and there's many different ways you can modify it to get it to, to look how you would like. Personally, for me, I don't really like the flat rear end of the E93. It kind of reminds me of like a table. So what I do instead is I added a, a wing back there to give it some to give it some shape in the back, and I think that helps a ton with the look of the car. They both have the same engine, the S65 V8 with the high revving, naturally aspirated motor. And the, let's be honest, the main reason you buy this car is because of the engine. So you're able to get that in an E90, E93. Uh, does it really matter to the chassis? If you're really a hardcore track guy, sure. But for me, I don't take it to the track, I don't race. Uh, I usually just take it on the weekends, cruise with the top down, listen to the exhaust noise and the induction noise. And I'm very satisfied with the car as is. And it's not like it's a slow uh, slouch either. It's it's very quick for the car. It'll, it'll definitely beat most cars on a 0-60 to 60 race at the stop sign, um, I'd say about like maybe 80 to 90%. Like cars are getting faster as we go now, and this one is not the fastest. If you really want speed, you wouldn't buy an E92 M3, right? You would get an F80 or even the new G80. The 
those have a lot of a lot of power. Let's talk about how an E93 M3 handles. I've had two E93s in my lifetime, a 335 and an M3, and surprisingly the 335i actually to me felt like it was more rigid. For some reason the M3, especially with the top down, the E93 version has some flex on the chassis and when you go for bumps and stuff it just feels like it's flexing. But for some reason the 235i a93 version had a more firm feel to it now you could probably fix this with some bracing underneath the car and I'll show you some pictures of what that would look like but to me it's not really worth it that much because I don't it doesn't bother me the flex but it could bother some other people and that's where you would lean toward the E92 M3 let's talk about some things that I believe it does better than an E92 it puts the power down better, especially when you put the top down in the rear. Now, all that extra weight from the hard top is, helps you to put more traction down. Another thing that the E93 does better than the E92 in my opinion, is that you can just hear the motor better in this car. Let's be honest, you put the top down, you can hear everything around you, including the motor, uh, the exhaust, the induction noise, everything just feels like you're listening in through surround sound speakers, not through mono speakers like your E92, where you can only hear it when you have the windows down. This car also has four windows instead of two, like the E92. So you can actually put your rear windows down, leave your top up, and listen to the exhaust without having the wind blowing at your face from the side. Sometimes I just want to have the top up and listen to the exhaust, and I can just put rear windows down, those small windows in the back. The E92 doesn't have that. You have to put your windows down or crack them open to listen to your exhaust. All right, so now the car's nice and warmed up. We can start having some fun. Valve's closed. with the top up you know it sounds amazing top up or down <laughs> so this car uh, the version that I have revs all the way to 8600 rpms uh, with a BPM sport tune and a GTS transmission tune I have BC Racing coilovers with Swift Spring upgrade, so it's pretty uh, firm, but I prefer that. With this kind of car, you don't really want too much body roll, and I'm very low, so I don't want to be rubbing all the time. <laughs> yeah, the exhaust setup I have, I believe, is perfect exhaust for this car smooth no rasp double x pipe with resonators and a valved exhaust from Alibaba okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put the top down I do have my seatbelt on it looks like I don't but I do have it on I just have it underneath so it's not bothering the mic let's go put the top down now so it's a quick hard top mechanism it takes about 40 seconds and you can operate it up to around 25 miles an hour. So if you're stuck at a red light, you can go ahead and still keep moving at least a slow speed to finish your hardtop mechanism. I also have a wind deflector behind me, two of them to be exact, and I'm gonna put the windows up so you can hear me. Those wind deflectors, especially the OEM ones from BMW, really make a big difference on the car's uh, ability to dampen the wind noise and make sure you don't have too much wind blowing around your head. As you can hear, much different they sound when you uh, drive with the top down. You can hear the exhaust, the induction noise, even while cruising. And that's the best thing about this car. It's way more fun to cruise in this than an E92. 
miles per gallon and I think that's what counts yeah just the right amount of power for the street to not get you into trouble and the right amount of noise too it's not too loud special yeah the motor is special but when you made it to a uh, DCT transmission the shifts are so crisp and instant it really pushes you back into each in your seat like a, like a manual transmission but so much smoother if I drive manual I'm just so jerky around but this thing just shifts perfectly revs matches perfectly man that sounds good <laughs> it's, it never gets old. You just cruise in a straight line, just downshift a couple, part throttle it all the way to like 6,000 RPMs, do it again over and over. just like the E92 and the E90. It should be treated with the same respect. We should all get along. But of course, trying to talk people into that, not gonna happen. 
in the end of the day, it's your choice and what you prefer. For me, I like the sound, and it's one of the best sounding engines of all time. Might as well hear it with the top down. If you think it sounds great in video, you gotta hear it in person. If you're ever in Fremont, California, hit me up. I'll gladly give you a ride. I'll even let you drive it, you know. This is a totally different driving experience. So I'm gonna have some future videos kind of similar to this style where I talk about other ownership factors such as reliability, what went wrong with the car, how much did it cost to fix it, is it a DIY friendly car, uh, what do I like, what do I dislike. I've had this car for two years, I know it inside out, I've done so much to it and I like to share my experience with others and help, help people out. So. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me to uh, motivate me to make more videos because I work uh, a lot uh, in the hospital and I'm just so tired at the end of the day to make videos. But when I see a comment or somebody come up to me in person and say they like my videos and that they think it's helpful, it really motivates me to continue going. And in the end, it's what I like to do. I like to help people out. Yeah, follow my Instagram uh, if you want to contact me for you know any help installing anything. And follow Ellie's Instagram, Cars with Ellie, so that you can catch up and or keep up to date with our build. I appreciate your guys' time you took to uh, click on my video and to watch it. And I invite you guys to subscribe to check out any other mods or installs, repairs that I may uh, do as well on this car. And I'll try to do more content like this too, where I just talk to you guys about my driving experience. Overall, I'm very happy with it, and I will continue to keep it for at least a few more years. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a good evening.